And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I say to myself, what a wonderful world. I'll stick with my day job. <laughs> my congratulations to the two awardees ahead of me. They stood and they spoke without a piece of paper in hand. And here I have a piece of paper in my hand. You see, I'm 82 years old, and just in case I forget, <laughs> I thought I'd jot something down. So may I begin then by greeting you, Dr. Isilden, your board of directors, your program organizing committee for this evening, all of the partners who are here with you from various academic institutions, and all of my friends and supporters who came out tonight just because of me. <laughs> I want to also celebrate all the scholars and all those who've received awards from Daughters for Life. The, the women, the young women who were on stage this evening presented themselves so well. And I sat there thinking that our future is assured. And what you're doing needs to continue to expand, to extend, and to have everyone recognize the talent, the skills, and the potential that there is if we give opportunities to young people wherever they are in the world. So I want then to underscore the points that you've made in your literature, that this is about striving to advance, to invest, and to promote higher education for young women living in the Middle East. So in accepting this award, and because it's called the Trailblazing Award, I accept in the memory not only of your daughters and relatives who've gone, but also in the memory of women who've blazed trails before me. Mary Joseph Angelique, whose history is indelibly scarred in the city of Montreal. Rose Fortune, the first black policewoman any place in North America. Mary Ann Shad, the first black woman newspaper publisher. Harriet Tubman, who escorted and walked thousands of miles on the Underground Railroad. And more recently, we acknowledged Viola Desmond, who refused to give up her seat in a cinema here in Canada, in Nova Scotia. Many worthy women have preceded me on the trail, but only in Canada can a story like mine be realized. Start from the bottom, work your way and work your way to the top, and become not only a Canadian citizen, but also through hard work, resilience, community service, and support become the messenger and the message of Canada. So thank you for this recognition. In this room tonight, we are witnesses to a unique understanding of just what overcoming adversity looks like. Listen to the story of our first recipient. We know that it involves discipline and hard work and conviction, and it is the responsibility of each and every one of us to, spoke, to stoke that for our young people. At the Jean Augustine Center, which was, record, which was mentioned in my bio, we say that an empowered young woman can improve her life and have a positive effect on the world around her. So we are committed to building self-esteem and self-worth of young women and girls 
by positively influencing their outlook and life, broadening their horizons and helping them to empower themselves. Because this is what it's all about and this is what Daughters for Life and this is what our involvement with you this evening is about. But before I end, I want to just set out a few things that I learned and I call them my grandmother's sayings. You cannot change the direction of the wind, but you can certainly adjust your sail. And this is what you did and this is what Ms. Corderon did. You adjusted your sail because you realized you could not change the direction of the wind. The other, she said, when opportunity knocks, you must be ready. And she said that to us, the grandchildren, get to school because education will raise the family's nose. And for a long time, I didn't know what that meant. How can education raise the family's nose? And what was that about? But I do know now what that meant. And I'm sure, Doc, you know what that means. She talked about opportunity, knocking and being ready, having those pieces of paper, having the opportunity to go to school, having the universities and the colleges support those young people. Because, and I saw this recently, opportunity dances with those who are on the dance floor. And if you're not on the dance floor, when opportunity comes, Another, she said, and this was when the expectation was that if you had something, and this is where I learned about a life of service, to whom much is given, much is expected. And there is something, and I'm still trying to figure it out. She always said, there, but for the grace of God. And it always ended there there but for the grace of God. I used to laugh and we used to make fun of that old woman who didn't have any more than about a grade two education, but her words have directed me all these years. If we cross the river together, the alligators won't get us. And this is what you're doing. We're crossing that river together we're moving forward with an ideal. We're moving forward with some expectation, with motivation, and we're doing this together. And another thing she said, and I'm sure every grandmother said that, if he can get the milk free, he won't buy the cow. <laughs> I'm sure many of you have heard that one. Took me a while to get that. But in teaching us lessons and in directing us things like cut your cloth according to your, cut your coat according to your cloth. You have little money, do whatever it is. We, and that was how she taught us about banking and money and spending. Cut your coat according to your cloth. And so on and on these truisms, this old foolish adage these things that were presented to us as young women, as young girls, those things affected us and those things helped to direct my life of service, my life of trailblazing. And so I asked the question, what trails did you blaze today? Who did you take with you on the trail? Because you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, take others with you. So Dr. Isleden, Daughters of Life, you will go as far and you will go very far because you're taking all of us with you. Ubuntu, I am, because we are. Thanks for the honor.